<laughs> so speaking, so, because you're talking about this re-politicization of music, and, um, but I've been thinking, you know, we, we grew up thinking that there were these cycles, you know, like the 60s, people were obsessed with the 30s, you know, the Dust Bowl and folk music, and Woody Guthrie, you know, and then in the 70s, people were obsessed with the 50s. But I'm wondering if the cycles have, if that way of thinking about things is gone because, uh, because well, the records are gone and people are listening, things are linear, you know, digital music. Yeah, I think sometimes uh, there's a difference between, oh, there is a difference between alternative culture and mainstream culture for, for me in Europe, people like this. Uh, when, but if you look at mainstream culture, if you look at Lady Gaga, then she takes so much of her influence from the 80s. Yeah. Absolutely, but it's a different headspace to alternative culture. And um, with the internet um, and the democratization of music, it's now a whole load, it's a, di it's a whole different, we're, we're sailing on a different sea. Yeah. And, um, you know, you don't know where the, where the underground is and where the overground is and it's all this stuff, as I say, it's this sort of pulp, huge ocean. Um, so, on the one hand, you've got people like Lady Gaga drawing from this reservoir of like, you know, going back and, to say, in the 80s. Um, but, um, there's, the internet is a very, very interesting ocean for young artists and young musicians. Who, uh, that's all they know. And it's this incredible way of communication that uh, obviously, as with social media, it's a whole, whole big conversation, but so, so many downsides uh, um, because it opens up all kinds of like, you know, uh, communication between nutcases. And it brings out some of the worst elements of human nature. Yeah. But at the same time, uh, young people, uh, young people can get their music out. Yeah. And to each other, you know, it's a very, very interesting thing. Very, very interesting. Like, just as when record sales and the music industry started to go like this, festival culture, from completely, from completely unconnected started to go like this. So as bands, rock bands started to starve, rave culture enabled festival culture. Because before raves, festivals were just, in, in my day, festivals were just these sad events that, yeah, <laughs> old people kind of did weird dances in these fields. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> really, really hoping that, you know, it was the remnants you know, of, of, of a different age in, in late 70s, early 80s, the festivals were a thing. But anyway, point, the point is, it's interesting how cycles go because, uh, you know, if I know I've been, you know, in a few rock bands in the last 15 years, Mother's Mouse and the Crips and my own band, and if it wasn't for festivals, bands would be fucked yeah. economically. You know, I mean, that's like, you, know, you, you really need, that's when you get paid, you know? So, uh, as that's going down, that goes up. But do you think that if the festivals didn't exist, maybe people would go to the club, you know, clubs or something? Uh, yeah, but bands wouldn't be able to really survive. I mean, the, the, the economics are so incredible, but the way that coincidentally happened, but what I'm trying to work out, and not maybe, maybe expressing it so well, is um, with the democratization of music, which as a person I really believe is, is a great thing, that someone can, can make a great record on a laptop. Yeah, that's a fantastic thing. With it comes because the record companies, one of the things, all right, they used to, you know, one of the things they used to do that we've lost is that a record company, when, they, when there was great people working at record companies, Jeff Travis at Rip Trade, um, uh, Tony Wilson at Factory, uh, you know, uh, I've worked with this guy, Lenny Veronica, Veronica at so Warner Brothers, Simon Stein. These people curated, so, Simon Stein, is he found the fucking heads. He found the dummy. He found the Smiths with uh, trade. He found Echo the Bunny Man. He put Patty Smith's first symbol out. Yeah. We couldn't wait. He found the drums. Yeah. And so 
with uh, there's always you know this upsides and downsides. But, so on the one hand, I'm pleased for young musicians that they can just post their stuff up on SoundCloud and they can, if you're great, you can communicate with your audience and you've got all of this. But I've seen it. It's a, trying to get trying to get noticed in this ocean of often stuff that isn't quite so good because it's not been curated. Yeah, yeah. Because the Tony Wilsons and the Seymour Steins aren't around. Yeah. 